Hi there, I'm Christopher Dunnigan. This is Handmade in Vermont.com, and today we're talking about the Hubberton Forge Flora Mini Pendant. This is going to be the 183030. This is the one with the glasses facing down, which gives you great task lighting, don't forget. Anytime you have unobstructed light coming down, that's going to be great light, like the light that's coming down on my hands from the pendants above me. So let's get into details. So this is going to be 25.3 inches tall, and that's going to be the distance from that bottom of that glass to where the telescoping rods start, and that's going to be the top of the decoration on that. 3.9 inches wide, and that's going to be the diameter, the outer diameter of this piece of glass, okay? When we get into telescoping rods, Hubberton Forge has a patent on the whole telescoping rod idea in the, in the lighting industry. Smaller rods going to telescope into a bigger rod. Where they're going to come together is called a clutch, and there's a little set screw here. And a way for me to show you more details about that is for you to look at the installation's instructions. These are the papers that are going to be in the box when you get this, and how we're going to look at those. If you're on the page for this on handmadeinvermont.com, look over on the right-hand side of the screen, midway down, you're going to see a link. It's going to say, click here for installation's instructions PDF. That is going to show you a ton of information. You're going to see a full parts list. You're going to see how these telescoping rods go together, which is really easy. You're going to see that this is going to be shipping with a 5-inch round canopy. This is going to go over your 4-inch junction box. If you guys are actually taking out recessed can lights, hi-hats they call them, pot lights in Canada they call them, um, there's a product out there called the can converter that can convert those recessed lights into junction boxes without you guys doing almost any work or, or much cost. So check that out, the can converter. If you just have a junction box like this, a 4-inch J box, you're going to be fine. There's a bracket that goes and connects those guys up. This is also slope ceiling adaptable to 45 degrees. So if you guys are working with a slope ceiling, there's a special knuckle right here, right at the top of this, that allows us to bend 45 degrees. So here's your slope, and then you're good to go. Okay? You'll notice the pull-down menu on the upper right hand corner. It's going to give you three different adjustable ranges. And remember, you have to choose the one that's right for you. It's really a good idea just to give me a call and I can walk through it, but you have to measure your ceiling before you call because that's the first thing I'm going to ask you. So when we talk about overall heights, you'll see we have the three starting at 26 point, I'm sorry, 28.6 to 35.5. That's going to be the short. The standard range is going to be 35.4 to 42.9, and then the long is 42.7 to 50.2. That's from this actual ceiling, not the canopy, but the ceiling behind it, way up there, down to the bottom of the glass. So those are the three adjustable ranges that exist as standard product. If you need shorter than the short or longer than the long, so let's say you have you know, you took out a wall between your kitchen and your dining room and you want to make an open concept, but that load-bearing wall, so you had to make a little soffit, you know, to hide that beam, and you want to uh, put them there because you're going to put a kitchen island there. That is where you may ha have a situation where, let's say you need this to be 23 inches long or something like that. That's where you come back to me and say, um, I need this to be X. I need this to be 25, 26, whatever, or longer than the long, don't forget, because you could have a cathedral ceiling. I take that information, I send that email over to Hubbardton, they come back to me with a quote and cost, adds a little time and money, and they're not returnable, but it is something we do every day, so don't be afraid to ask, okay? So moving on from there, you'll notice also on that parts list, there is a picture of this, or a drawing of this. This is a retaining ring tool. This guy is going to take the place of your hand getting into this glass. And how you deal with it is you get this retaining ring. This is going to go over your socket. It's a G9 socket I'll talk about in detail in a second. It's got threading on the inside. One side is flat and one side has a little ridge on it. And it basically retains the glass to the fixture, just screws down. You put your bulb in first, don't forget, because you're not going to be able to get your hand in there to put a bulb in. This retaining ring fits into the flared end of this, and there's little notches that are going to line up. So you basically just kind of pop it in without a problem, like that. Sometimes these can fall out. Well, this one's not falling out. But on this guy, you would basically just use this as a proxy for your hand, put it into the glass, and then you're just going to use it to slowly tighten the retaining ring onto the socket, which is going to keep your glass on the fixture. So it's ready, tidy, lefty, loosey, and then when you take it out, the retaining ring will be gone. That'll be on the glass. The glass will be on the fixture. You'll take this and put it into a kitchen drawer and forget about it because you may need it some date on the road, and it'll be there. Okay. So now let's come back and talk about the socket. Hubbardson Forge says this is a halogen fixture. It's designed before there were a lot of good LEDs out there. It is going to ship with a G9 halogen bulb, and 60 watts is your max because of the heat generated by a, a halogen bulb. However, you don't have to use these if you don't want to. 
There are awesome examples online everywhere you look of really good G9 LEDs. So if you put in G9 LED, just put it into Google or go on Amazon and do it, and you're going to start seeing all these things popping up. These kind that have the orange lines inside, and I think I've got another one here. See these two? These are phosphorus LEDs. So phosphorus are pretty cool. The cob ones I tend to like a little better because I think you get a little bit more light out of them. So th the ones in the picture next to me are the cob ones, and it looks kind of like a corn cob. So these really pump out light. This is a 60 watt equivalent. This is a 75 watt equivalent. You can choose your color temperature with LEDs. I tend to like the warmth of an incandescent bulb from my youth. That's 3000 Kelvin. If you guys like the whiter light, you can always get that too. That's 4000, 5000 Kelvin. Make sure when you're buying these, if you're in a hardware store, look on the box and make sure you really see those kind of things. If you're on Amazon or one of those websites, it'll tell you right off the bat. Warm white, 3000. Cool white or daylight, 4,000, 5,000. You know, don't think that daylight is warm because it's really not. It's a white light. The other thing is buy a dimmable version if you guys want to dim this. It's going to be pretty important. Okay? And put it on a decent dimmer that's set up for LEDs, the other thing. Okay. So you're going to have two different types of glass, two glass setups you can do for this. You're going to have opal glass, which I'm going to get into detail later on. It's an opaque white glass. So it does warm up quite a bit when light comes through it, especially if you got that 3,000 Kelvin warm light. Other glass option is going to be this, and this is a setup of two pieces of glass. You're going to have this guy, which is hand-blown, seated, clear. So it's clear glass with tons of little air bubbles in it, okay? And then this is another version of opal glass, and this is going to act as a diffuser so you don't see the socket through the clear glass. So these are going to be your two setups that you can get this in. So I want to touch on Hubberton Forge's glass for just a second. Hubberton Forge is Opal glass is not just another piece of white glass. This is actually hand-blown glass. All of their glass is hand-blown. And to begin with, it's actually a clear piece of glass to start with. And then they come in, they blow a second layer on the inside of white glass. Then they come back and they do a third step where they sandblast the entire outside. So you'll notice when you get these in your hands, they actually have layers of glass on them on the end. You can see them on these two pieces. And it gives it this really soft, uh, semi-transparent kind of milky quality it's it's a soft soft glowing piece really really pretty you know they're really obsessed about details at Hubberton Forge and a lot of people don't um, I don't think they appreciate it out in the world but you appreciate it because that's why you guys are here watching this video there you go let's talk about let's get into metal finishes now if you're on our website handmadeinvermont.com do me a favor look over on the left hand side of the screen you're going to see a lot of red tabs over there one is going to be the finishes help guide when you're done with this video, go over there and open that up for me, and you're going to see a video at the top of that page of me talking to you guys about the differences in Hubberton Forge finishes and how they can look on different types of forging. I'm going to be referencing a color chart just below the video, so scroll down a little bit, you'll see that chart. You'll notice there are pictures that have the letter A on them, pictures that have the letter B on them, and I'm going to be talking about that range you can see in variance on there in that video, so it's really important to watch the video, use that chart, when you're done with all that, come back down to that chart. You can click on any of those pictures and see a lot more samples of Hubbardson Forge fixtures in that finish. If you want to see a bunch of stuff in dark smoke, click on dark smoke. If you want to see a bunch of stuff in vintage platinum, do the same, and so on and so on and so on. That's a great way for you to see a lot of Hubbardson Forge stuff in different finishes and really take advantage of that, okay? So our showroom in Vermont has over 350 Hubbardson Forge fixtures spread across two floors. <clears throat> we have a What's On display page on our website. It's going to be back in the red tabs over there. A lot of good things in that, that section to check out. So when you open that up, you'll see it's all divided up into different sections like uh, dining pendants and outdoor lighting. We're always adding to that. This is the biggest showroom in the world of Hubbardson Forge. They don't even have a showroom like this. Nobody does. And they use this as their showroom when you guys come to Vermont to visit us. So lots and lots to see here. <clears throat> you can see all the different glass, all the different finishes, all the different fabrics, all of those things. In addition to that, we have a clearance center. So the clearance center stuff are returns, discontinued things, and showroom samples. That's an amazing deal for you. If you guys want to take advantage of that, you, gotta, you have to come here to, to Vermont to see us. And when you do... Do me a favor, measure all the kind of things about your project and what you guys are doing. So the most important thing is measure your ceiling heights to begin with. Measure distances between junction boxes and like windows and ceilings and those kind of things. So we, if you're looking at sconces on the wall, you can see if they're going to fit for you. If you're doing pendants over a kitchen island, measure the distances between those junction boxes. Widths of tables, kitchen tables, dining tables, uh, lengths of tables. 
islands, all that good stuff. <clears throat> and also uh, do a couple more things. If you guys have some tablets or iPads lying around, take pictures of all these things. Take pictures of the, of the kitchen, take pictures of what the projects you're doing. Bring that in so we can kind of go through those pictures together and we'll be able to see what you guys are up to, okay? And also the boxes and clearance stuff, for clearance stuff, are basically uh, packed for shipping. Don't forget, these were supposedly shipped out. So <clears throat> the boxes tend to be on the bigger side, so bring a decent size SUV if you want to take stuff home. It's a really good opportunity for you. When you buy your Hubbardson Forge fixtures from HandmadeInVermont.com, shipping is free to every state except Alaska and Hawaii. There's no tax if we ship out of the state of Vermont. We're the only dealer that offers 90-day returns and no restocking fees. That's three months after you receive something to send it back, and there's no restocking fee on that. Some larger items and custom things, and it's usually going to be big things on pallets are going to be non-returnable. It'll always tell you on the page for uh, an item if that is the case, so always keep an eye out for that. And we also offer a rush program. So to get all these different metal finishes, Hubbardton Forge doesn't stock. It, they generally take about three to four weeks to get product out. We can cut that time in half, and it's really, really inexpensive. If you want to know more about that, just drop me a quick email, and I can clue you in on details, okay? So our showroom in Vermont is open every day except Sunday from 11 to 6. I'm here every day except Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to drop a quick email, you can do that all the time. And that's going to be at sales at handmadeinvermont.com, and we spell out the word Vermont. <clears throat> or you can call me during business hours, 802-446-2400. So thank you for stopping in today, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.